So this video is about why I recommend visiting Lan Ha Bay over the more popular Ha Long Bay. In northeastern Vietnam, there's a place like no other on earth. It's like something out of a C.S. Lewis novel or James Cameron film. It's a cross between Narnia and Avatar's Pandora. It's a mystical place that almost seems fake when you see pictures of it, but it's not. It's real and it's even more beautiful than the pictures. I'm talking about Halong Bay and Halong Bay's lesser known neighbor, Lan Ha Bay. They're both beautiful, but we'll talk about why I prefer Lan Ha Bay over Halong Bay in a moment. Okay, so before we dive into my trip to Halong Bay and Lan Ha Bay, I want to familiarize you with the area so this video makes more sense. So here is Hanoi where most people start their Halong Bay journey. Let me zoom in a little here and show you the Halong area. So right here you have the city of Halong and just to the south of it, you have a bridge that goes to the island of Tuan Chau. And then right here you have the larger island of Cat Ba. I'll talk more about these two islands in a moment. And lastly, you have Halong Bay here and its neighbor Lan Ha Bay over here. Now that you're familiar with the area, let's talk about my trip down to Halong Bay and Lan Ha Bay. When most people visit Halong Bay, they go on a two day, one night type of cruise. I don't think that's enough time to truly appreciate this place. And the tour boat companies pack so much into those 48 hours that you don't really get to enjoy the beauty of this place. So no matter where you decide to go in this area, I'd stay a few more days than the two day, one night option that most people choose. I traveled with six of my friends and we stayed for five days and even that didn't seem like enough time to really explore the area. So like most people, we made our way to the Halong area from Hanoi. For about $15 round trip, we took a luxury van to Halong City. The approximately three hour drive was very comfortable and scenic. Once we got to Halong City, instead of jumping on a cruise boat and heading straight to Halong Bay, we decided to spend a couple days on Tuan Chau Island. Like I showed you before, Tuan Chau Island is just off the coast of Halong City, and you can take a short cab ride to get there. We stayed at a pretty inexpensive resort called La Paz Resort. It was $80 a night, but it was two to a room, so it was really only $40 for each individual. We actually got pretty lucky. On the two days we were on Tuan Chau Island, a huge storm rolled into Holong Bay and all the cruises were canceled. But we were already at this resort, so we just got to chill and hang out in the pool. And there's also a great beach right by the resort as well that has a view of the Holong Bay Islands off in a distance. And we could see those even though it was cloudy most of the time we were there. So after relaxing a couple days on Tuan Cha Island, we headed to Lan Ha Bay. In order to get to our boat that would take us to Lan Ha Bay, we had to take a water taxi to Cat Ba Island. So we've been uh, dropped off at a beach with some abandoned <laughs> ships. Reminds me of like a ship graveyard. It's a bunch of old rusty ships, which makes me a little nostalgic as a former Navy sailor. I guess we're gonna jump on a, uh, a nicer little small boat to go out to the boat we're gonna be riding to Halong Bay. It's starting off a little sketchy, but I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Like I mentioned before, I went with six of my buddies and we rented three cabins on the boat. So there had to be three of us in one room. I was in that room, but it wasn't that big a deal because we didn't spend much time in the room anyway. When you go to the Halong area, there are many different cruise ship options. There are the luxury cruise ships, the ones that are huge, all the way down to the smaller, more rustic type cruise boats like the one I was on. I personally prefer the smaller boats. There were no more than 15 of us on there at a the time. So it felt less like a touristy group tour type of thing. Okay, so why Lan Ha Bay over the more famous Halong Bay? The reason is pretty simple. They're the exact same place with the exact same scenery. The only difference is Halong Bay is saturated with tourists. And that's just not what I like. You can get the exact same experience and scenery as Halong Bay only a few kilometers away in Lan Ha Bay. Like I showed you earlier, Lan Ha Bay is located just off the coast of Kat Ba Island, just south of Halong Bay. Halong Bay is much bigger and covers an area of 1,500 kilometers and has over 1,900 small islands. Lan Ha Bay is much smaller and is 76 kilometers with over 400 islands. While Lan Ha Bay is much smaller, there are actually more islands per square kilometer than in Halong Bay. So it seems bigger. Lan Ha Bay also feels bigger because there are far less tourist boats than in Halong Bay. There were many times I felt like we were the only boat in the entire bay. We were able to explore secluded beaches and coves where it was just the group I was traveling with and some local fishermen. Oops. 
So here are a couple things that I definitely recommend doing whether you're in Halong Bay or Lana Bay. Number one is kayaking. Kayaking around the islands is the must. I had an absolute amazing time kayaking. I was lucky, we actually had an odd number of people. Like I told you earlier, we had seven. So I got my own kayak. And if you can do that, I highly recommend it because then you kind of control your own adventure and where you go. So the next is a cooking class. If you go on any kind of cruise in Halong Bay or Lanha Bay, they're going to offer a cooking class, but it's really not a cooking class. You're actually gonna be making Vietnamese spring rolls. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I don't cook. I'm probably one of the worst cooks in the world. And even I was able to make a semi passable and delicious spring roll. So in my opinion, you should definitely not skip out on the cooking class. So next is bike riding around Kat Ba Island. I really loved getting off the boat and bicycling around Kat Ba Island for a while. It reminded me of a lot of the rural areas in Hawaii. It's definitely a relaxing way to spend a few hours. So if your cruise offers a bicycling tour, I would definitely do it. So the next thing to do is probably my favorite to do in Lanha Bay and that's swimming. One of the great things about being on a smaller cruise cruise boat is that your group kind of gets to dictate the agenda and my group just wanted to relax and swim. So that's what we did most of the time. Whether it was jumping off the boat in the middle of the bay or finding a secluded beach on a deserted island, this was one of my most favorite swimming experiences in my entire life. The water in the bay is the perfect temperature and you cannot beat the scenery that you're surrounded by. So definitely take advantage of the opportunities to go swimming in the bay. And the last thing I would recommend doing is just relaxing and enjoying the beauty of this place. That's why you go there. Lots of cruises try to jam activities into every second you're on the boat. And while activities are great, the main attraction is the beauty of the area. So just relax and take it all in. Okay, so that's some of the things I recommend doing. If you've ever been to the Halong area, please comment below what your favorite activity was. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps more people find it. I'll be in Hanoi, Vietnam for another two weeks, and then I head off to Chiang Mai, Thailand. So I'm really excited about that. I put out a travel video every single week. So if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.